So you bought the Mothman deck and you're now trying to figure out what to do with all the mutants and how to improve the deck, make it more powerful, more consistent. And you've seen some people online tell you to remove the rad counters. Well, those people are cowards. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about ways to upgrade the deck and push it onwards, both with starting with budget versions of cards, cards that are, you know, below a couple of dollars, and then onto non-budget, where some of the cards are 10, 15, 20, or I think the most expensive card on this list might be $30, yikes. Either way, budget and non-budget ways to improve the mutant deck. And we're gonna focus on the rad counts, because I think they're the most interesting thing about the deck. On top of that, we're also gonna talk about milling as a win con, milling out opponents. Now, mill has been a thing in Commander that's not been very good for a very long time, primarily because your cards don't do enough heavy lifting in a format where there's 300 cards to churn through, and on top of that, people will often recur things out of their own graveyards and be enabled by the milling. Rad counters give you an extra add-on to that, and we're going to talk about proliferation too. And if you want to win some Fallout collector boosters and get involved with auctions and giveaways like these, why not check out my Whatnot streams in the description below. Whatnot is a live streaming platform that brings together live auctions with live streaming. So you'll be able to get things from me, ask me to sign them, you can buy things, win things, and giveaways and we just chat about magic as we go it's a pretty fun time if you use a link in the description below you get 10 pounds off your first purchase so you buy a single from my store that's on there of single cards uh what's an example of one for example this this galaxy foil comet star pup if you're playing blue white red control and legacy yes there's cards he's playing legacy or maybe just after like signed basics to support the channel and have some signed foil lands in your deck signed by me your favorite bearded bastard on the internet use the invite link in the description below get 10 pounds off your first purchase and get involved just hanging out on the app you might win some giveaways and i'll see you in the next stream so like i said we're going leaning into the rad counters the milling and the damage that they provide and it being a, a cool way to mill people out whilst also taking active game plan actions with the cards that create said mill counters. For those of you who don't know how rad counters work, we put them onto our opponents via our creatures like Mothman, and then in their main phase, after they've drawn a card for the turn, they trigger. They mill equal to the number of rad counters on themselves, they remove rad counters equal to the number of non-lands that are put into the graveyard this way, and they lose life equal to that number too. We're pinging them, we're milling them, and we're doing other active stuff too. Mothman is cool. So first up in our budget options is Evolution Sage, a card that says whenever a land enters the battlefield, we get to proliferate. When you target a player to proliferate them, you proliferate all counters on the moment. Experience, poison, and rad counters. Just keep that in mind. Evolution Sage says that when a land enters the battlefield, either off of us ramping into it from like ramp spells like Harrow or Cultivate, or just making our land drop, we get to proliferate those counters. It also works with a lot of the creatures and the already existing synergies in the deck of creatures that get counters. There's a lot of that going on in the deck that I'm not going to go into too heavily in this video, but all the proliferate stuff improves that too. For example, you could include Fathom Mage in your deck, which is a 1 1 creature with Evolve. Whenever you put a counter on it, draw a card. So every time you proliferate, draw a card in essence. It's quite a strong effect and the card is very cheap at 20 cents. The great thing about Evolution Sage is that if you can play any fetch lands, whether that be your simple evolving wilds or your actual good fetch lands like Misty Rainforest, when they enter the battlefield and then get cracked, they trigger her twice, meaning you get to do two land four triggers. On top of that, anything else that puts multiple lands in at once also gets you more triggers. Harrow, for example, puts two lands in by sacking one and thus gets you two triggers. We're going to play Splendid Reclamation anyway, a four mana source that returns all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. I have this later on in the list of cards to explain because we're going to be milling ourselves too, but Splendid Wreck also plays really well with a landfall. If you manage to put like five or six or seven or let's say 20 lands in your bin and you Splendid Wreck them all back into play with an Evolution Sage in play, you get 20 triggers, 20 proliferates. And before you know it, your opponents are so radiated that they're pissing blood and their noses fell off. And on the topic of Splendid Reclamation, that's a point to cover, is that Mothman gives all players a radiation counter, yourself and your opponents. So that you might be proliferating yourself as well to get milled, to get things into the bin, to play off cards like Splendid Reclamation. If you are willing to self-mill, Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time are two incredibly cheap sub-dollar um, delve spells that are absolutely worth playing Commander. Being able to like draw three cards for one singular blue mana by delving away seven cards you don't need anymore, or Dig Through Timing for two cards in the top 10 are incredibly strong. I just said top 10, it's actually top seven. I played Dig Through Timing yesterday on Arena. I have no idea how I thought it was 10. It's because it's 10 mana, obviously. 
Flux Channel is our next baby's first proliferate deck include. These are the obvious ones, right? Again, a budget include, although it's creeping up a little bit. Might be over a dollar soon if we keep seeing proliferatable mechanics come into Commander like this and the energy decks that we're seeing. But three mana, two, two, human wizard. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, proliferate. Non-creature means your planes will good, your mana rocks, your instants and your sorceries. In essence, if you can do a double spell turn, non-creature spell turn, you get to proliferate twice. Pretty strong, quite, quite obvious, really. Now, if we're self-milling, we use Ramen Up, Excavator, or Crucible of Worlds, which got a reprint with a gorgeous, like, Gek-featured Fallout skin. Both of these cards allow us to play lands out of our graveyard, which again plays very well with our Evolution Sage. For example, if you crack a fetch line that's two proliferate triggers every turn, and Ramen Up Excavator allows you to replay that fetch line each and every turn, as long as you have fetchable lands left in your deck. And whilst we're at it, I'm going to include some pretty standard includes for me when it comes to green. This card's non-budget, but Oracle of Moldiah gives you another land drop allows you to see the top card of your library. This, in combination with fetch lands, means that sometimes if your top card is not a land, you can crack your fetch to shove your library to try and find another land on top to virtually draw cards. Deck manipulation, plus fetch lands, plus oracle, plus extra land drops, plus evolution sage, Mwah. We've got a land-based stew cooking, something that I very much enjoy playing in Commander. Our next card is a card that won't be budget for much longer, and that's Consuming Aberration. A five mana star star horror. It says its power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyards. Whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards from top of their library until they reveal a land card and put those cards into their graveyards. It's as big as all opposing graveyards combined, and if you're milling, that means it's going to be fucking huge. Consuming Aberration is going to easily be a 30-30 or bigger, quite regularly. But on top of being a huge beater for five mana, which isn't that scary, uh, we've got the second clause. That whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards on top of their library until they hit a land and puts those cards in the graveyard. I affectionately call this mulching. I think I heard a wizard's employee or staff member in an interview once talk about how that was going to be the keyworded term back when um, Green, Black and Black Blue were doing this in like the Gatecrash Return of Africa era. Either way, it's not, and the card mulch doesn't do this, so it's weird that I think of the term mulch. Either way, it's mind grinding them to one land. And essentially, the problem with Consumer Aberration in the past is trying to cast spells on top of it, because it's five mana, and you need to cast spells to get value out of it. Although it is just a big beat on its own. I think Consumer Aberration is the kind of card that you sandbag and cast when you know you got a full up spell, like a, a one mana bauble or soul ring or similar afterwards to trigger it, or you uh, reanimate it at instant speed, untap and go to town. It's one of those. Either way, I'm shocked this card is, I don't expect it to be like 10 bucks, but I'm shocked it's sub a dollar. It was reprinted in Battle for Baldur's Gate, it was reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered, it was reprinted in Zendikar Rising Commander decks as well. So it's had quite a few reprints over the last three or four years, including a cheap Commander product reprint as well. But this card is great, and the the, the D and D art, the Battle for Baldur's Gate art that we'll show you on screen now, that one is gorgeous. It's so gross. And the reason we're looking to do extra mill on top of the rad counters, because exclusive mill is bad, but consumer vibration has a pretty good effect on it, is that a lot of the cards in the deck care about mill in a way that is interesting and fun. Both Tato Farmer and Marlock Queen are both strong with self milling and enemy milling effects. Tato Farmer says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, a land full trigger, you may give yourself two rad counters. So you can get some self mill on the go, and you can tap it to put target land card in a graveyard that was milled this turn onto the battlefield under your control tapped. Pay attention to Tato Farmer not saying your graveyard. So if you consume an aberration and someone else mills a land, which they will, you can tap Tato Farmer to put their land into play under your control. It's a really cool effect. A Milo Queen says whenever a non land card is milled, draw a card, then put a plus one plus one counter on Mar Milo Queen. This ability triggers only once each turn. Now, Milo Queen both enables rad counters and then draws you a card each turn as you rad each player out in their main phase, but also will trigger in your turn uh, off your own milling, but also if you just do a generic mill like with a consuming aberration. Next up, back to the proliferation train, we've got Azuri, Stalker of the Spheres. A four mana 3 3 that when it enters the battlefield, you may pay three if you do proliferate twice. So it is actually a four mana 3 3 that can be a modal seven mana 3 3 double proliferate, which is nice, but really the reason you might play it is the second line of text. Whenever you proliferate, draw a card. If you're only including four cards that proliferate on their own, I wouldn't include the Azuri, although the, although the deck already had some with um, atomization, for example. But my point is, with something like Fathom Mage that I mentioned earlier, which can evolve 
evolve, grow, get counters on it, and draw cards. It can draw you cards whenever a counter goes on off of any effect. Whereas Azuri specifies proliferation in general. I actually think that Fathom Mage is better than Azuri in this deck, thanks to the other ways you can put counters on things. Shout out to Pastor on my Discord for this include Danny Pink from the Doctor Who deck is a 4 mana 4 3 human soldier advisor. He's got Mentor. So many attacks, but a plus one plus one counter on target, attacking creature with lesser power than it. Creatures you control have whenever one or more counters are put onto this creature for the first time each turn, draw a card. This card is nuts. In any deck that you're going to put counters on things, you play this card. Firstly, he enables the counters. He does the thing where he enables and is the engine by mentoring and putting counters and stuff like, for example, a Fathom Mage or any of the numerous creatures we're about to talk about. But on top of that, each time a creature under your control gets a counter on it that turn, you draw a card. Bearing in mind, it's not a plus one plus one counter. It can be any kind of counter. So, for example, we're not playing Cauldron of Souls in our deck because proliferating minus one minus one counters wouldn't go very well. But if you were to give something persist and it come back, Danny Pink would allow that creature to trigger and draw you a card. And it triggers only once per turn, but it triggers per creature you have. Danny Pink is absurd. Very good with the latest um, the Murfolk Commander that explores all your creatures, and just very good here. Everyone should be playing Danny Pink. I can't believe you can still get it for $1.31. Doctor Who is such a good set, because the collector boost has dragged all the prices down. So the foils are like four or seven bucks, but all the other ones are like sub a dollar. It's so good. The platonic ideal of a Magic Commander set. Two more includes for our budget list. We've got Throne of Geth, which I recommended for, I recommended for a lot of decks, if I'm honest. If you're proliferating rad counters, energy counters, or anything, play a Throne of Geth. It allows you to sack bodies off and get them into the bin, so you can do some sort of aristocrat shenanigans too. You can proliferate off the back of this. The deck card is less than a dollar and it will only climb in price from here. Chasm Skulker is a three mana creature that says whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Chasm Skulker. When Chasm Skulker dies, create X11 one, one blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Chasm Skulker. It doesn't quite literally synergize with everything in the deck. For example, it doesn't do rad counters, it doesn't mill, but it does get bigger as you draw cards, which every player should be trying to do, and you can proliferate to make it larger. And when it dies, it makes you a huge board of creatures that are probably going to be unblockable for at least one player at the table. Now we come to cards that are worth five, 10, 15, 20 dollars. Magic is wild. That's a deep dwelling is a card that I say put in every fucking blue deck. So this is not specific to this deck, but being able to flicker something at end of turn is so, so good. In the video from yesterday, I already talked about teleportation circle in the science deck. I'm now saying play Thassa deep dwelling in the, the blue, black, green deck, because you can flicker your shit. Flicker your Maya look queens. It resets the counters on it, but you get to trigger and target a uh, opponent, put rad counters on them. Flicker your Mothman at end of turn to put another rad counter on everyone. It's like an extra a proliferate effect. I like flickering stuff. I think it's fun. I think I'm addicted, actually. Thassa's Oracle is an include if you are a cringe lord. If you are self-milling, you can try and win off a Thassa's Oracle, but it's not my kind of magic, but I know CDH players can't get erect without thinking about it. Gaia Sage is a two mana, one, two creature with evolve. that taps add green to your mana pool for each plus one, plus one counter on Gaia Sage. And thus, as it evolves and you proliferate it, it becomes a huge mana engine. It's currently, you can get these for around three bucks at the moment, but this is the kind of creature that's going to creep up without a reaper. Print. Cameo of Whispered Hope is another example of this, a 3 mana 1-1 one, one that says tap to add X mana of any one colour so it fixes your mana where X is its power. Note, it's not just counters. Gaia Sage cares about counters, Kami cares about power. But importantly, Kami has a second line of text on it. If one or more plus one plus one counters you put on a permanent you control, put an extra one on as well. It's worth noting that Kami is already a $1.60 lowest price at the moment on the market, meaning that this card printed in March of the Machine is going to climb as well, because its effect is very good. And one more version of that, there's a load of them out there like Marwin and stuff, but Silvana Heart of the Wilds, a 3 mana 2 3 that gives every player in the game a draw if they were to have the biggest creature end of the battlefield. But you're playing big mutants and monsters and consuming aberrations, so you should be triggering this more than everyone else. And then for one green tap, you had X mana of any combination of colours where X are the greatest power among creatures you control. Proliferate yourself up to a big body and then tap Salvala to make a load of mana. Uh, a consumer aberration plus Salvala can get you up to 30 or 40 mana easily. An Exorable Tide is an obvious include. It's actually already in the deck. I've just realized this as I'm recording. I was going to say that actually, okay, here's what I was going to say about an Exorable Tide because I think it's an interesting point. I have had this deck card in multiple decks over the years and I've always ended up cutting it because much like consumer aberration, you have to resolve it and then cast spells afterwards or untap with it. And people get a bit uneasy when you have this kind of thing in play. But on top of that, it isn't just a big old beater as well. Considering Aberration does draw a target on your back, and much like this does at five mana, but it can also just punch your opponent and kill them in the late game if they haven't got the resources to kill it. Meanwhile, this can just be a do-nothing. So ultimately, I was 
making this one honourable include. I can't believe I missed the fact that it's still it's already in the deck. I've played two games of the deck so far and I haven't seen this card yet. That's super interesting. Contagion Engine. Six mana, ETB, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature target player controls. So it shrinks one player's team. But then for four mana on tap, proliferate, then proliferate again. A double proliferate for four mana on tap is very strong, very unusual to find. Uh, I remember buying like six or seven of these for a dollar each back in like, I don't know, 2011, I want to say, back when I was first playing Commander, and people told me they were bad. It's now a $17 rare that hasn't been reprinted lately. This is the kind of card that is expensive because it hasn't been reprinted, so if you are a non-proxy wanting to own the original cards, you could just wait till we get a meaningful reprint in a future set like, um I don't know, a Commander Masters 2 or similar. Either way, this card is sweet for really hurting on one player and then giving you double proliferates every turn afterwards if you've got four mana spare. A card climbing in value that's in a non-budget slot is Staff of Completion. This was a jank bulk mythic on release, I believe, but we're now trending upwards of $6. You pay one life to destroy target permanent you own. That's a, a unique thing that you rarely do. Pay two life and tap to add one mana of any color, so it's a mana rock. Three life and tap to proliferate. That's the one reason that we're including it. Pay four life and tap to draw a card, and five mana untap Staff of Completion. This card is a great mana outlet if you've got a load of life left and you've got a load of mana to spare, but ultimately it's an easy include for mana dogging, drawing cards, and proliferating. And then Took a Thorn is another card that's climbing from the same set. Four mana, three, five, flying. If you'd proliferate, proliferate twice instead. And you can remove three counts from one creature's artifacts and planes you control, which will have an abundance of, by the way, because you very easily proliferate counters on stuff. And you can put an indestructible counter on this creature. And don't forget, you can also proliferate that counter. You can have two indestructible counters if you really fancied it. Ultimately, proliferating twice every time you proliferate is pretty good. At the point where you get two triggers off an evolution sage or two proliferates off of a contagion glass, you're then proliferating four times. At that point, you're living a magical Christmas land, but it's a thing you can do with this deck. Look, I don't need to tell you how to suck an egg, but doublers are good, all right? Let's finish off with some self-milling with Moldrofa the Gravetide. A six mana six six that says during each of your turns, you may play a land and cast a permanent spell of each permanent type from your graveyard. If you haven't heard of Moldrofa before, I don't know where you've been. She's been a popular commander since she was printed in Dominaria block. Or Dominaria set, should I say. Either way, this card is very strong if you're dumping a load of shit in your yard. Like I said earlier, milling often enables people to recur things. Moldrofa is one of those cards that you will enable. If you are milling your opponent and they are planning to and they sit down and reveal Moldrofa as the commander, you've got to realize that you're just enabling their bullshit. So why not play it yourself? Conduit of Worlds, again, bulk rare on release, slowly ticking up. It says you may play lands from your graveyard. So it is a four mana Crucible of Worlds, but also says tap, choose target non-land permanent card in your graveyard. If you haven't cast a spell this turn, you may cast that card. If you do, you can't cast additional spells. So in essence, it's got a source of speed activation where you can cast one spell from your bin, that's your spell for turn. You really don't want to use this on big fuck off spells or even a pinch when you've got no cards left in hand. But either way, a Crucible of Worlds with extra text for one mana is pretty decent. And lastly, Altar of Dementia. A card that I play way too much of and it's probably up there with flicker spells for things that I recommend everyone jam in every deck. In essence, it gives you a sack outlet to put things into your bin to stop things from being stolen by your opponents. If your creature's a big like consuming aberration, it can one-shot people. It enables the mill plan. It is just really, really strong in many decks, especially this one where we're trying to deck people out with mill. Some people are going to think mill is dirty and you shouldn't play it. Those people are scrubs. I hope you've enjoyed this list of cards that I'm going to include in my Mothman Master deck. I'm deciding exactly which command to go with. Probably Mothman, if I'm honest. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and let me know if you want to hear the dog meat and the Caesar um, upgrade path as well. I put out science yesterday. I'm doing this way too late because it's never sent me any product for me to try them early, so I couldn't really get a feel for the decks. I could have made upgrade guys just looking at the lists, but I feel like playing with them gives you a better understanding of how the deck well, how the deck plays. Don't forget to smash that like button. Let me know in the comment section below if I've missed anything in particular. And also, of course, check out Whatnot as well. Sign up, bookmark the show, and hopefully you'll win some of those giveaways next Thursday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta for now.